Hey everyone, Morgan here. So today on the YouTube channel, I have a very special guest. This is a little bit of everything with Sarge, and he's gonna talk to us about our mental well-being, how we can handle everyday stress. You know, I've talked about these topics, topics a lot, but he has so uh, much expertise in this area, and I really encourage you to go check out his channel, um, and everywhere you can go check him out. All the links uh, to where you can go find him are in the description down below. So let's uh, dive in first. Uh, thank you so much for being on the channel, Sarge. Um, what method can people use to quickly build up a resilient mindset? Hey Morgan, thank you so much for having me on the show. I've been a big fan for years. Um, so your first question was, what uh, what kind of techniques can people do to get into a, a resilient mindset real quick uh, in the in the time of a stressful situation or in the time of a crisis? Uh, I know in one of your previous videos you talked about uh, relaxation breathing, and that absolutely is one of the things that we we recommend for just managing general stress, but also you know, anger, agitation, anxiety. Uh, and the method that I use for that is, I call it the 4-1-4-1 method. So you breathe in through the nose to a count of four. So literally a slow count of one, two, three, four. Hold it for a full second at the top. Exhale through the mouth. One, two, three, four. Pause at the bottom. So that's the first thing. Um, but what we also teach in, in generally in mental health for to combine with that is, is two CBT skills, which we would call cognitive thought stopping and positive reframing. So these are two that I recommend that people get into the habit of practicing, not just in stressful situations, but just generally for managing everyday, everyday life, right? So cognitive thought stopping, an example of that would be, uh, you probably have seen some of the stuff that's circulating on social media. So for example, with the uh, COVID-19 social, um, social distancing, people might say that the first natural thought that might come to people's minds would be, uh, I'm stuck at home. Well, you would say to yourself, okay, in cognitive thought stopping, I'm going to stop thinking like this and I'm going to have a more productive, more rational thought. And then you would reframe it. I'm not stuck at home. I've got some extra time to spend with my family or I've got some time to work on my skills. So it's just changing that mindset just a little bit. And when you do that, what you're actually doing in the brain is you're changing the, the chemical reaction, the electrical reaction that goes on in the brain. Our thoughts actually do that. They affect our feelings and our thoughts and our feelings combined affect our behaviors. So you've got your cognitive thought stopping and your positive reframing, or you might just call it reframing because it's not always easy to be positive, right? So we practice that in our day-to-day -day, uh, situations and just, you know, when you, anytime you catch yourself thinking negative thinking, doesn't have to be anxious, doesn't have to be agitated, just some kind of try to catch yourself, oh, there you go, you know, I'm, I'm thinking negative thoughts, maybe it's about yourself, maybe it's about, work, maybe it's about uh, your finances, just catch yourself thinking about it and say, okay, we're going we're gonna to stop that. We're going to think about this a little bit differently. I would also add though, and, and that's something you got to practice, you know, frequently to get really good at it. But when you do, it will really improve your overall mental health and your overall quality of life. But I would also add that in times of crisis, uh, you're also probably going to have to be responsible for helping out those around you who may not be coping with the stress as well as you are. So uh, when you have a very stressful situation going on, uh, it's going to be important for people to check in with each other. Uh, so this may be your partner that you live with, uh, but also the adults in the household are going to be responsible for checking in with the kids. We're going to talk about that in just a second, right? But um, so with your partner, right, when I live in Hurricane Alley, I'm, I live over here in Charleston, South Carolina, and we're, the last few years we've basically had a hurricane every year. So we, at this point, we can predict we're probably getting another one again this year, and it's extremely stressful. And so uh, what my wife and I, what we do is we check in with each other frequently in the days building up to the hurricane. Okay, how are you feeling? Do we need to evac? Do we need to bug in? Do we have enough supplies? You know, what's your anxiety level at? And you let the other person talk, you listen, and you work it out together. You make mutual decisions together, right? Sometimes if a person's having kind of a, an emotional freak out and, and you're not, that's when you might have to help them be 
uh, using those skills, right? So we, to do that with somebody else that you're working with or somebody that's just been through a traumatic, traumatic experience, and you may even be able to do this if you encounter somebody that's in a car accident and you're trying to help out at the scene of a car accident, right? Talk to them, try to get them grounded. So you're going to ask them, hey, do you know what day it is today? Okay. Um, hey, who's the president of the United States? Do you remember who the president was right before that? Can you count to 10 by twos for me? Uh, I'm going to ask you to remember three objects uh, and then, you know, ask them a couple other questions like, uh, hey, do you know what time it is or where were you going? Uh, and then kind of come back to those three objects. That's for like extreme trauma when somebody's actually showing signs of being a little bit in mental shock. So you're kind of getting them grounded, get them talking. Oh my God, can you believe that that just happened? That guy just rammed his car right through that restaurant window. I, I can't even believe it. My mind feels like it's not real. Just get them talking. Okay, so listen get them talking, validate. That was extremely stressful. So validating means you, like, you basically are echoing back to them. What did, what did they see uh, and what is the emotional reaction that they said, right? So you're right. That was very stressful. I, I couldn't believe it either. How are you doing right now? Okay. The next step to that, prepare, prepare and predict. And this comes from the NOVA model for helping people with trauma. So you say, okay, you know, after they've talked for a little while and you've kind of gotten them calmed down and they're talking at a normal rate, you may say, wow, you know, sometimes people who go through stressful situations like this, they have some difficulty for a while. They might, you know, next time they see cars driving, start getting a little bit more anxious. They might, um, you know, be nervous about getting in a car. They might um, have trouble sleeping, right? So you prepare and predict. So we, ventil we let them ventilate, we validate their emotions, we prepare and predict for what's coming and uh, try to also reassure them that they're safe now, right? Because that's a big part of the trauma response or the adrenaline response when there's an emergency going on is like all these neurochemicals and your neurotransmitters in your brain are kicking up, your hormones are, are kicking up, adrenaline's firing off, and you go into this fight, flight, or freeze response. Well, that's actually a good thing because when people go into that response, they, they get stronger, they get more resilient to pain, they get faster, their brain can actually process information faster, uh, but it also doesn't feel very good, right? So uh, getting them to get back to a normal state of mind is part of, uh, you know, the way that you can help those around you in a crisis situation. How can people battle stress on a day-to-day -day basis, on just everyday life? So how can people prepare and, and manage that stress on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, in the field of mental health, we talk about self-care, we talk about wellness. So what that means is that on a regular basis, you are scheduling some time for yourself to do things that help you to re basically recharge the battery is, is, the, is the way that I describe it. So uh, I, I work with people all day long, helping them with all kinds of mental health problems. And it's, uh, you know, part of the healing profession. We, ha we give and we give and we give, but we also have to just take care of ourselves or we won't be able to continue to do that over the long term. So you, you drain down the battery and then you have to find ways to recharge the battery. So some of the ways that I like to recharge my battery is um, I like to uh, garden. Uh, I enjoy making YouTube films for uh, YouTube videos for my uh, channel. Um, I love to watch movies with my wife. I like going out to eat. I like walking. Uh, other people might like to draw or do puzzles or uh, paint, uh, but you've got to find some general way that you're making time every week to recharge your battery. Okay, that's, that's your self-care. And the wellness piece of it, it has to do a lot with your fitness and your overall health. Uh, for those who are in, those, those are your subscribers who are in the preparedness community, uh, we have to make sure that we are physically also prepared, right? Physically prepared. So that might mean that uh, you're scheduling time to do walking, you're eating well. Uh, I've got some videos up uh, on my channel just about losing weight because I had gained a lot of weight in the last year and why that's so important overall. If we had a crisis situation, I want to be fit enough to deal with it. Right now we're dealing with this COVID-19 situation. You want to be physically healthy so that if you get this or somebody in your family gets this, that uh, you're going to be in your best shape possible to fight it off. So that, uh, that wellness and self-care is a big part of the preventative part of being ready to deal with a crisis. Back to my previous point, the cognitive thought stopping is also that that's part of how we're training our brain to mentally handle 
unusually stressful situations. So you don't want to wait until that hurricane is bearing down on your doorstep. You don't want to wait until the pandemic is hitting the United States. You want to have this skill that you've developed it just like you just like with uh, lifting weights, you're developing your muscles. You want to develop that muscle that's up here so that when these things happen, you can go fall back on the, that skill set, right? In the preparedness community, we know that in a time of crisis, you fall back to your skill set, the training that you've done. So cognitive thought stopping, catch yourself thinking these negative thoughts, these panicky thoughts, these agitated thoughts, and stopping them and saying, I, I got I to gotta change my mindset a little bit. I got to reframe this a little bit. And think about this differently. This is a huge skill to develop that will help you in all kinds of situations in life so that when the crisis happens, and there will be more, right? We know that. I know I'm going to get a hurricane here. I know we're going to have flooding in Charleston. Uh, we're probably at some point in our lives going to be dealing with another huge disease pandemic. You want to be ready so that when that time comes, you develop to this muscle and you're more prepared. And also, part of that, right, is falling back on all those experiences, those traumatic experiences that each of us has lived through, right? If I know that I've lived through a Category 3 hurricane, if I know that I've lived through tornadoes, then the next time that happens, I've got a little bit different mindset than I know I've been through this before. I can get through this again. I'm going to make smart decisions that maximizes my chances of being safety. I'm not going to go into full-blown panic mode and I'm going to uh, take care of the people around me to the best of my ability. So I'm a parent and you know, how can other parents help their kids deal with very stressful situations, natural disasters, you know, uh, something terrible has happened. How can we help our kids deal with those really traumatic or stressful situations? So those with small children are, uh, obviously the adults are gonna have to be responsible for making the big decisions in the household during a time of crisis. And uh, so it's gonna be even more the onus of responsibility on developing that mental muscle for dealing with stress and dealing with crisis situations and dealing with trauma falls on the on their adults, right? I do think it's okay to talk to kids about what's going on in, in the situation around you, the crisis, uh, and in fact, that can mitigate if there's a trauma situation, right? Like let's say you came across a really bad car accident and there was blood everywhere and people were bleeding all over the place and, and your children saw this, right? That's, that's actually creating a, um, a, a traumatic image in their brain that will have some kind of impact on them. And by just talking to them about it, what did you see? How did that make you feel? You're right, that was very, very scary. You can mitigate a lot of the damage that that trauma will do. I also think it's important to, for the adults to give the children uh, information that is age appropriate. Uh, there's no need to overdo the amount of stress and worry that's on them and don't you know don't necessarily put your stress on them you can validate and say uh, this is stressful mommy and daddy are scared too but we're going to work together to get through this what are some of the, and then ask your children what are some of the things that might help you feel safer right they may say if it's a small child they may say they want to have their favorite toy with them they're worried about that they may say i'd like to prepare uh, i see that mommy and daddy have these things that they prepare um, such as having a, a bag with clothes and medicine and things like that in case we have to get out of here real quick. I would like to do that too, right? So ask them so that some of those questions. If they can't come up with it, you can give them some suggestions. Would it help you to uh, put together, you know, a couple of your favorite things to keep with you at all times? Uh, would it help you to draw a picture about what you saw? And just kind of get that communication going, but keep it age appropriate. And remember, in times of crisis, it's the onus of responsibility on the big decisions is on the adults. The kids are not in a position to be able to make those, and you shouldn't put that on them. You could ask for their, you know, their input on what would help them feel safer. But if you bug in or bug out, that's got to be on the parents. Um, how you deal with those stressors, you know, uh, what kind of things you put in place, those decisions are adult decisions, not for little kids. I hope that helps. If you have, if there's questions in the comments section about that, I'm more than happy to elaborate a little bit more on this or any of the other parts that we talked about. Thank you so much for your really detailed answers. I really appreciate it. And I hope that uh, my audience has gotten a lot from this. Tell us where everybody can find you. So the best way to stay in touch with me is to follow me and subscribe on my channel. Uh, my uh, YouTube channel's name is A Little Bit of Everything with Sarge. 
I talk about things such as gardening, especially uh, for the beginners. Um, I do cover some, uh, some product reviews of products that I think people in the prepping community would be interested in, battery banks, uh, pocket knives, things like that. I also spend uh, some time talking about mental health and managing mental health from a therapist's perspective and sharing my expertise, uh, having worked in the field for 20 years. Um, I love interacting with my subscribers, so please go on, go on over there and comment and give me your questions and uh, I will be happy to get involved and, and give you my thoughts. Um, I, I really appreciate you having me on the show here, Morgan. It has been a true honor and like I said, I've been a fan of yours for years. Uh, I would love to do this again sometime. I hope everyone will check him out and uh, give him watch his videos, give him some likes, give him comment a little bit, you know, give him give his uh, YouTube a little bit of activity, and uh, he's got some really great content, really great ideas. So highly encourage you to please go check him out. All again, links down below in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. Conquer tomorrow by preparing today, and reframe that mindset. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye.